readers, true crime memoir, Me, was a Lamy finalist, a New York Times editor's choice, and Publishers Weekly describes her as a literary voice like none other. She co-hosts the Ask Five Girls Advice podcast, and her collage and digital artwork has been shown in museums and galleries and community centers. Please give a nice round of applause for our first reader, Miriam Gerba. Does everybody in here know what albondigas are? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> I was a spinster child. I discovered this reality on the playground. I was playing with friends and they were having a speculative conversation about our futures. Because our futures would be female, girls were talking about family and each of us took a turn explaining how many children we would have, specifying the number of boys versus girls, and it was just taken for granted that we would have a husband who was on board to help us make all these people. <laughs> when it got to be my best friend's turn to share, Athena said, I want six kids, three boys and three girls. I made the same face I make when mom announces we're having albondigas for dinner. <laughs> I hate albondigas. <laughs> I'm not a fan of wet meatballs. <laughs> Are you? Also, six children? Six? That sounded like the worst ball in chain. That was double what my parents had, and I already thought they had two too many. <laughs> Athena looked at me. It was my turn. I didn't say anything. Athena prodded, how many do you want, Miriam? The Mayans developed a valuable concept, zero. <laughs> This phenomenon filled my head. The zero was interrupted by visions of myself piloting like Amelia Earhart or swashbuckling like one of the animatronic pirates I'd seen in Disneyland. There would be no room for children on my pirate ship. There would be no room for a baby on my biplane. There would be no room in my body for parasites or albondigas. <laughs> None, I answered. None, the girls echoed. Yup. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> One girl muttered. I looked at her like she was stupid. <laughs> because she was. <laughs> I brought my spinster attitude to Mexico. We were staying at my grandparents' house in Guadalajara. They had been married for what seemed like a thousand years, and their marriage seemed ugly to me. Abuelito worked for a newspaper, El Informador, and days that he stayed home, he shuffled around the house in huaraches, loose slacks, and a sarape with a big-ass eagle on it. <laughs> When he was going to the offices of an informador or to see his mistress, he exchanged his homebody outfit for a tan suit, starched collar, and cufflinks. A Christmas-colored button <clears throat> pinned to his lapel announced his political affiliation, PRI, Partido Revolucionario Institucional. Behind his back, Dad made fun of the button. Institutional Revolutionary Party? How do you institutionalize a revolution? <laughs> Doesn't it stop being a revolution once it's been institutionalized? Your grandfather's wearing an oxymoron. <laughs> Abuelito hated gringos, but he made an exception for us, his grandchildren. He also made an exception for good-looking Yankee women, and he'd been fond of a sign that had hung at Guadalajara's train depot for decades. Gringos go home, gringas stay. <laughs> <laughs> Abuelito was wearing a tan suit, and I watched him slip on a street. 
straw fedora. He shuffled toward the dining room table. I glanced up at him from my chair. He looked at my legs with disapproval. I was spreading them wide apart, imitating the wingspan of the eagles featured on his zarapes. Mija, he said, ¿cuándo te vas a casar? I was 13, old enough to be a child bride, and I smiled at Abuelito. Nunca, I said. Nunca, he echoed, shocked. ¿Y por qué no te vas a casar? I grinned. Abuelito, soy feminista. <laughs> Abuelito cackled like an old lady. His liver-spotted hand descended, landing on my head. He patted it. Piensas demasiado. Giggling, he turned, shuffled out of the house, and entered the smoggy afternoon. Once I realized I was part lesbo, marriage <laughs> and procreation seemed even more impossible. My queerness pleased me, filling me with subversive joy. I wouldn't be a baby-making machine. I'd be a revolutionary love machine. <laughs> a dyke. I would have sex with women, and we would make fun of straight people together. <laughs> This was a future worth looking forward to. <laughs> when I told mom about my plans, she wasn't as enthusiastic. <laughs> I had fallen in love for the first time. She went to Catholic high school with me. She wore combat boots and her dead grandpa's clothes. She drove a truck. Her grades were average. <laughs> All I wanted was her tongue in my mouth forever. Mom, I said, see, si? can I talk to you? See, si? in private. Mom got a look of concern. Her thin lips settled into a straight line. I followed her to her bedroom. We sat face to face on her salmon comforter. I have something to tell you. Mom braced herself. I'm in love. Con quien? I told her the white girl's name. Mom looked as if I'd answered measles. 